Hey everybody, top 10 reasons why Nintendo is king. I'm gonna go from one, two, three, four, five, all the way to 10. All the different reasons why I'm still a Nintendo fanboy to this day. Even though I love talking about everything video game related. Even though I'm a massive Sony fanboy as well. Even though I'm just a gamer, for goodness sakes. I'm a fanboy in every respect. I love getting excited. I love deep diving. And yet, even after all of this, loving Nintendo, loving Sega, loving Sony, trying to love um, Xbox, but just failing every time I try to do that. 10 reasons why Nintendo is still king. And the reason why I want to talk about this, apart from the fact that Nintendo is always on everyone's mind and we all get really excited for the Switch 2 and all that, I want to illustrate why we're excited for the Switch 2 to begin with. Why we even give a shite about Nintendo, who has been giving us video games for like the last 39 years or something. It's been a while, ladies and gentlemen. So without further ado, let's get to it. I said without a further ado. <laughs> I do. I, I think I still said it wrong. All right, let's cook, let's proceed. Let's proceed. Number one, no microtransactions. This is a big one, and I'm never going to shut up about this. When you buy a Nintendo game, that's it. There is nothing hidden inside the game. Every time you hit the pause button, you're not going to be bombarded with, hey, do you want to buy this DLC? Hey, do you want to buy this microtransaction? Hey, are you aware you don't have the actual proper version of the game? No, no, no. It's just done, which leads into the second reason. Only one version of games, that's a big one. When Zelda Breath of the Wild came out, when Tears of the Kingdom came out, when Mario, um, when Super Mario Odyssey came out, whenever you buy a Nintendo game, that's it. You're not feeling disappointed because you're wondering, hey, there was another three, four versions of this same game with a price increase of $20 to $30 per pop. Maybe I should have gotten the premium one. Am I missing out on something? And then when you do settle for the basic version, you feel like you're getting an incomplete game. Like, oh, because I can't afford to pay $150 for a game and I've just bought the normal standard version of a game, hey, I'm missing out. No, no, only one version and that is the way it should be. Well done, Nintendo. The third thing, smooth launch every time time you don't need to wait for patches with nintendo games and this is a massive selling point right no patches you don't need it when a nintendo game comes it is good right out the gate that is a rarity in today's modern gaming world and is not spoken about enough in my humble opinion a smooth bug free launch they will delay games for seven years if they have to so that quality is met. That is applaudable, that is respectable. Let's get to the next reason. No modern politics. In the land of video games, for Nintendo, a game is a game. You are not going to be lectured. You're not going to be looked down upon. You're not going to, you know, have to have all this modern rubbish inside a game. In the world of Nintendo, let's imagine that there's a little magical rainbow here, right? Where in my world, a rainbow is just a rainbow. In this world, a game is just a game. That's it. If it's a Mario game, Mario is not trying to secretly, you know, get certain messaging across to you. No, no. He's a fat Italian plumber who just wants to jump around and defy all the laws of physics. That's the way it should be. <clears throat> the next point, number five. They don't milk games. I'm going to fight you all on this before <laughs> anyone says otherwise. From afar, from afar, it may look like Nintendo milks games because, hey, there's been like a billion Mario games and a billion maybe isn't enough if you actually count how many games simply have the word Mario in it. Absolutely. If you connect the entire almost 40 year history of Nintendo as far as video game consoles are concerned, yeah, you hear the word Mario pop up. So you think what, there's been a million Mario Kart, there's been a million 3D Mario games, there's been a million Zeldas. No, no, and no. And let me quickly explain why, right? Because Nintendo could milk it. When Nintendo farts, Money comes out, $100 nurse goes flying in the wind and the rest of us are trying to grab it. Nintendo could milk their IPs so much and they don't. And I dare say they're probably the only company who could do it and don't. Let me explain. So for example, every single Nintendo console, Super Nintendo, GameCube, Wii, Wii U, Switch, you get one Mario Kart game. Now, currently on the Switch, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has sold like 80 million copies, like insane. Super Mario World Odyssey, any first party Nintendo game sells something stupid. Like I think a failed Nintendo game still sells a million, right? And everything else, tens of millions. Just insane, incomprehensible numbers. Why do I bring this up? Because every, Mario, every 3D Nintendo console, the Nintendo 64, 
the GameCube, the Wii, the Wii U, Switch, yada yada. All of them have one main 3D Mario game. Why does that matter? Because you know if this was Sony, if this was Xbox, if this was anyone else, there would be a different 3D Mario game every single year within these consoles. We've had Super Mario Odyssey. That's the big 3D Mario game brand new that we've had on the Switch. That's it. Switch has been out for like, what, seven, eight years, something like that at this point, and only one 3D Mario game. That is commendable because you know if Nintendo was like, no, every two years we're going to release a different version of a 3D Mario game. If they did that every two years, I hate to admit this, it would sell. We'd, we would still buy the darn game, even if they did it every two years, and they don't. And they've resisted this temptation ever since the Nintendo 64. And this goes without saying, with all of their IPs. They could release lower quality, lower everything, get it out every two years. Maybe the sales get impacted just a little bit, but they are resisting rolling in so much money by saying, no, we will only release our games when they meet a certain bar of quality, when they do something new, and they've paced themselves, so then you get one version of each entry of each different franchise per console, and that is commendable because most companies would not have that willpower. They would pump out those sequels one after the other after the other. If Sony, like I love Sony, right? But if Sony was experiencing the success of the Nintendo Switch and they had all the IPs that Nintendo have, I guarantee there would have been three, um, there would have been three 3D mainline Mario games already. There probably would have been four different Mario Kart. There would have been five different brand new Zelda entries and so forth. They would have spammed it so then every six months you're getting something. Now this isn't about hating on Sony, I'm just demonstrating here that the temptation is real and well done to Sony. Let's go to the sixth point though, right? Most unexpected consoles, and this is true, right? One of the reasons why the Switch 2 is so exciting is because it is Nintendo. They go whichever direction they want. When everyone else is running, they're flying. When everyone else is flying, they're swimming underwater. No one knows what Nintendo is going to do. And as a result, there is the greatest excitement when it comes to a Nintendo console. Before the PlayStation 5 was revealed, before the next Xbox was revealed, we were excited. I was excited. I love that hype train and wondering what the possibilities are for the future of those gaming consoles and generations. But of course, we know deep down that it's probably going to just be a stronger, more powerful version of what came before it. And you can only be so excited for that. With Nintendo, they're batshit crazy. You don't know what they're going to do. You don't know if it's actually going to be a Switch 2. You don't know if it's going to be a traditional console. You don't know if somehow they're going to try into the VR realm. They were the first ones to get everyone into um, motion controls with the Wii, which then the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox at the time, they all tried to copy that. They're the first ones to successfully have a hybrid console where it's the Switch, you play at home, you pull out the dock, you play it on the go. They were the first ones to have a copy of the entire game running into the controller with the Wii U. You never know what they're going to do and love them or hate them for that, whether it's a win for them, whether it's a failure. The fact that you never know what these crazy monkeys are going to do, bring me 3D Donkey Kong, I would love that. That's exciting. The seventh point, they are actually family friendly with games and movies. One of the last companies where kids can enjoy their content without parents being concerned about what is being promoted to them. And in a very political, social-driven world, as much as we want to avoid this, and we do, and I absolutely do, Nintendo really is one of the last bastions of hope where you can just leave your child, boy or girl, to play a game, to watch one of their movies, and not need to worry which direction are the Nintendo people going to push my child? Are they going to push these beliefs? Are they going to push these values? Nintendo doesn't bother doing any of that. Nintendo recognizes that they're just a games company and that they just have lovable IPs that adults and kids alike adore. And they don't try to take advantage of that. They don't try to push things. You think Japanese people don't have their own values and cultures? Of course they do. They're human. They could be pushing things that they would like to see more of, but they don't. They know their place in society, that they are a games company, that they are an entertainment company, and we can trust them with that. Because it isn't good if Nintendo pushed what I felt was important. It wouldn't be good if Nintendo pushed what I felt wasn't important. What's important is that they don't push anything as a massive selling feature. Number eight reason out of 10 
By the way, if you've made it this far, please hit subscribe on the video. That is the only hint that YouTube understands that you are enjoying what you're watching. If you're already one of my Smexy subscribers, please like. That's all you can do. I appreciate it. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. It's like a mega like. But moving on to the eighth point. An easy one, but the games are still fun. Even after 39 years, they innovate just enough while not messing with the true and tried formula, and that is commendable. Yes, you can label um, Nintendo fans, you know, just sheep, and they're so simple, and this and that. You can be uneducated and say that, that's fine, but the truth is it takes a lot of skill and a lot of patience and just wizardry, frankly, to still have us excited about Zelda a billion years later, excited about Mario Kart, excited about Kirby, excited about any of these IPs. That takes a lot of skill, so well done. The number ninth point is pushing their systems visually to the max. Even if it's cartoony, hear me out. I know Nintendo is not associated with big dramatic graphics and state-of-the-art this and that, and it's true, they don't. And ever since the Nintendo Wii, they have been literally a generation behind visually in terms of specs, yes. However, whatever underpowered console Nintendo is working with, they do still do one thing which is very impressive. Even if the developers are given the underpowered Nintendo console, and that's what they've been dealing with for decades at this point, even so, they try to get the most out of that as humanly possible. Yes, what is represented and what comes out from the art direction is cartoony, absolutely. But do they try to get the absolute most possible out of the machine each and every time? Yes, it's actually quite impressive. There's a reason why Mario Kart 8 holds up so well, even though that was a Wii U game, because they push the boundaries of the Wii U as much as possible. Zelda Breath of the Wild, yeah, that came out, um, the performance wasn't so great. They were pushing the envelope, all of these games, Super Mario Odyssey. When you play Super Mario Odyssey, that to me felt like a CG film, especially when you looked at our photo mode. Everything looked so smooth. You didn't see the corners of um, the, the edges and the polygons and so forth, right? When I play a Nintendo game, yes, it looks absolutely cartoony. Like, we're gonna, we're gonna, call, we're gonna call it what it is. However, it is the best looking cartoony that the console could possibly get. When I play um, Super Mario, the, the latest Super Mario Party game, it looks fantastic. It is gorgeous. I love all the vibrant colors and so forth. And when you play Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, fantastic. When you play these Nintendo games, you can have a different um, opinion as to whether or not that should make things more realistic or whatever. That's cool. I'm even with you to some extent. But they push it. You get the best visuals. That's why the Switch 2 is so exciting if it has PS4 Pro level graphics or slightly better. Because PS4 Pro levels, that's, you know... Um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, that's Ghost of Tsushima, that's God of War, that's Spider-Man, that's that level of graphics, right? And Nintendo can work with this much and get that much output. That's why it's so exciting for Nintendo to have a more powerful console finally, because even with the Switch 2 having less power than the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, I don't care what anyone says, it is not going to be that powerful. No way, no how. That said, Nintendo works so darn hard on their games that despite that, I think the visuals are going to come very close. We are going to be genuinely surprised at just how good looking these games are. And number 10, congratulations if you've lasted this long. The 10th point of why Nintendo is king, you don't feel betrayed, you don't feel ripped off or misled. You get what you expect. Games are still games with Nintendo. Focus is still how can we make the best games possible? They never grew arrogant, just hard-working people bringing amazing games on systems I do wish were a bit stronger. That is all. God bless you all. Take care. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.